Welcome and let's get started with this video about full bore and ready use bore valves and especially when to use them. So let's get started. So full bore valve basically has this length which is the length of the valve ID that is the basically the fluid that can pass through the valve this distance and the line distance which is the line ID that is the inner diameter of the pipe is same. So basically the flow has no restriction passing through a full bore valve. Now you might be able to guess what will be your reduced bore valve. Reduced pore valve is similar to it except that if you see this distance which is the distance which is inside of the valve where the fluid would be passing would be different than compared to what is the size of the line. So since it is reduced than the line size the term comes as reduced pore valve. Now let's get to the next important question as to when to use a reduced pore valve and when to use a full bore valve. So let's look at those considerations. So when anybody looks at a full bore valve or a reduced bore valve, we cannot come directly to a conclusion with just one parameter that this would be good or that would be good. It's not a versus situation where full bore versus reduced bore and one person wins. It depends on certain parameters and we have to take two, three parameters into consideration and only then can we decide who is the winner for the entire project or for that particular application. So let's look into that. The first consideration is pegging. This is an interesting consideration. Imagine that this is your pipe and here's your pig. So basically pigging is a process where you try to cleanse the pipe by inserting the pig into the pipe. So basically the pig passes through the pipe and any impurities or whatever dirt is considered or collected inside the pipe is removed off. So this is basically a type of cleaning which is done to the pipes to uh, enlarge their life cycle. Now what happens is how does this have a consideration with our full bore or reduced bore? Let's look into that. So imagine this is your reduced bore valve and we insert the pig. What is going to happen? Your pig is going to get stuck inside this valve because the pig size would be that of the line ID but the reduced bore would have a lesser size. So the pig won't be able to pass through the valve and it would get stuck. Whereas if you take a full bore valve which is the winner here because the entire pig would be able to pass through the valve. So for such cases we need to consider full bore valves and we cannot consider reduced bore valves. I hope you're liking these videos and finding them insightful. If yes, please consider subscribing and especially press the bell icon so that you can receive a new educational video every Saturday. Now let's like get into the next criteria. The next criteria is one of the most important criteria. It's simple but one of the key criteria in not just engineering projects but throughout the industry which is cost. So in terms of cost the special reason for going with reduced bore one of the primary concerns is the cost. So here if you notice the cost of full bore is greater as compared to reduced bore. Why? Because the material that is going to be used for full bore is going to be more as compared to reduced bore since the bore has to be exactly equal to the line. Hence, if it's a cost consideration, reduced bore has an upper hand and it stands as the winner. Now, let's look like into the next case, which is the process fluid. So, especially as a rule of thumb or generally, if it's a utility line and you have water, it is recommended you might go for a reduced bore valve for such cases. It depends on client to client design basis, but usually for such cases, you can go for a reduced bore valve and save the cost of the project. Whereas for process fluids, usually it depends on how critical the process fluid is. Example, certain acids or viscous fluids or such cases where you might have to go for full bore valves. Now, the next consideration is pressure drop. Yes, if you see in full bore and compared to reduced bore, what do you think which valve would have higher pressure drop? It's very simple that the reduced bore valve would have a higher pressure drop as compared to full bore. Why? Because the line size is reduced. So there is going to be some restriction to the fluid and some pressure drop. This pressure drop is not high, but still you need to confirm with the process if they're okay with such pressure drops throughout the line or throughout the system or have they compensated for such pressure drops.
the next thing which comes to mind is how do we decide as instrumentation engineers how to go is there some kind of thumb rule that we can follow that helps us to identify which type of valve should be selected for this case what i feel is one of the good criteria is to look for what the piping department is doing why because in the same lines where instrumentation valves would be used also manual valves would be used which would be procured by piping so even piping would do their analysis and research to which type of valve would be suitable because piping valves are having a great quantity as compared to our instrumentation valves so for such cases they already would have done a survey as to finding out which valve would be suitable so for such cases for our automatic valves we can look at that line or that piping spec and see that what they are doing and we can sometimes just follow them as a thumb rule so this is also another thumb rule that we can use to follow while selecting full bore or reduce bore valves I hope you're finding this videos valuable. I would love to provide even more value. Here's an ebook on engineering standards on PIP engineering standards. These standards are small, crisp and just 5 to 10 pages. I think it's a good starting point for anybody who wants to get deep into standards and learn these things. Almost there have been 1500 plus downloads in the first 2 days and engineers from co companies like Technip, Wally, Shell, DuPont have found it valuable. I think you might like this ebook. The link is in the description below. I hope you're finding these videos valuable. If yes, please consider subscribing and especially press the bell icon so that you can receive a new video every Saturday. Meet you in the next video. And if you want to contact me, you can contact me via the comment section or through my LinkedIn page or my web blog, etc. I would love to answer any technical questions or discussions that we can have. Thank you so much for watching this video.